The Dick Van Dyke Show. Starring Dick Van Dyke. Rosemary, Maury Amsterdam, Larry Matthews, and Mary Tyler Moore. Hi, Brad. Oh, well, good morning, Sally. How are you? My, you look radiant today. I do. Gee, thank you, bud. Well, what's new? Oh, nothing much. Prince Valiant just called, wants you to trim his bangs. Really? <laughs> Very funny. Boy, do you, the whole world's a sketch, and all the men and women live on Flugel Street. Hey, what's bugging you? Who's the highest paid writers on TV? I don't know. Ernie Burton and his staff. Ernie Burton, the brain picker, is the highest paid? Just look at this. Ernie Burton heads top paid writing staff. Comic Cliff Barnett credits success of his show to big payroll. Let me see that. Happy writers make happy shows. Hey, how do you like that? I don't like it. We've been knocking our brains out for Alan Brady for seven years. Now a new show comes along and he pays the new writers. More money than we're getting. Yeah, and you know, he wouldn't even own the Cliff Barnett show if it wasn't for the great stuff that we wrote for Cliff when he was a guest on our show last season. Right. Huh. We're in the top ten, he's in the bottom hundred. This is like your field marshal Montgomery, and you won the big war in Africa. And when it's all over, you find out that Rommel was getting more money than you. <laughs> exactly what it's like. We do all the work and the desert rat gets the gravy. Yeah. <laughs> morning, Sal. Morning, buddy. Who's the highest paid writer on television? Uh, I don't know who. Ernie Burton, a desert rat. <laughs> who? Rob, every writer on the Cliff Barnett show oh, gets more money. I saw the headline in Variety. I didn't get a chance to read the article. Yeah, but Rob, it isn't fair. Now, we're much better writers than the Cliff Barnett writers. At least I know I am. Yeah, well, everybody knows I am. Oh, listen, you guys, you know about Barnett. He's a terror to work for. Alan probably has to pay more money just to keep the people. Yeah, but Brady told us we were getting the top money. Here, here, let's stay calm. No, no, let's stay on calm. We're very much unappreciated around here. Oh, Sally, that's not true. You know Alan says you're the best in the business. Yeah, I wish you'd tell it to my bank book. <laughs> listen, you guys, we have a show to write, and if we do not write it, we don't get any money at all. Rob, why don't you try it this way? If we don't get more money, we don't write. Come on, you guys got plenty of money. Well, who's talking about money? Yes, you are. Rob, it isn't the money. Money is just a symbol. Yeah, it's a symbol of wealth. <laughs> Look, we have a show to write. We have a whole cast out there waiting for our words. Now, can we please get on with it? No. I've waited my last wait. Yeah, me too. I'm weightless. <laughs> Sally and me are on strike. So am I. <laughs> Guys, Alan didn't say he didn't want to talk to you. He said he was busy. Yeah, well, we're busy, too. There's a big strike going on here. Okay. All right. You win. I give up. Well, will you tell me something? Is this a hunger strike, too, or can we order a little lunch? Go ahead and order. My stomach's still working. Good. Sal, so, would you take down the order? I am not writing anything until we get this raise business settled. Oh, for Pete's sake, Sal, that's ridiculous. Not as ridiculous as Ernie Burton's guys making more money than we do. Right. You take the order. All right, I'll take the order. Well, yeah. How about a raise on rye? Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, if you don't have that, I'll have a frankfurter. Yeah. Make it two, and I'll have a bottle of four up and a slice of six-layer cake. What? I'm cutting down. <laughs> Look, you guys, I think you deserve a raise. I think you ought to get one, but this is no way to go about it. Rob. I just left Al in the rehearsal hall, and he has a marvelous new way to end the show. So have I. No script. <laughs> well, well, what's bothering Smokey the Boar? <laughs> Smokey the Boar? Hey, not bad for a self-taught incompetent. <laughs> well, what was Alan's idea? Well, Alan said that instead of the jokes that you wrote for him, he'd like something funny for the end of the show. Why don't you just stand there and squint? <laughs> Look, uh, now why don't you go back to your office? We'll write something and type it up for you. Fine, I'll tell that to Alan. Pity about Mel. He's been going to a brain surgeon for two years and hasn't been waited on yet. I heard that. <laughs> Look, fellas, I know you're going to be able to work something out with Alan sooner or later, but right now, you are killing me. We've got a job to do. Rod, you're beginning to sound like a company man. 
Yeah, that's right, Rob. You are a company man. Yeah, you, you represent management. Well, uh... you, Rob, you are an executive. Come on, Sal. You know I'm a writer. We're all writers here. Yes, but you're the head writer. Now, Alan will listen to you because you're an executive. You asked for the raise. You want me to ask? Mm. Yeah, you're our next link in the chain of command. Mel is the next link. Mel is a missing link. <laughs> now, look, Rob, Rob, look, you talk to Alan. It's your responsibility. All right. All right, I can talk to you, Alan, but I'll tell you right now, it's not going to do any good. Mel is going to call. Uh, would you get me Alan Brady, please? How much do you think we ought to ask for? Same as these guys are getting plus a nickel more. <laughs> we got 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%. 10%
Now, he has two employees who would like just a little of that richness, and I think they deserve it. Now, maybe I'm, I'm stupid. Of course, Rob, of course. <laughs> Rob, Rob, maybe I can demonstrate it better with the flowers. Flowers? Yeah. Now, this pot is Alan Brady. Good casting. <laughs> All these flowers are his various enterprises. He has that many flowers, huh? Now, this big, lusty, healthy blue flower, that's Ishimaru. Ishimaru. Uh, uh, <laughs> motorcycles. Right, right. right. Now, this sickly little green flower, that's Tam O'Shanter. Tam O'Shanter, uh, coloring books. Right. Got that. Now, this big pink flower, that's Brady Lady. Brady Lady? Brady Lady is owned by Alan's wife. Alan's wife? She pays the band. Alan's <laughs> wife pays the band? What's well, a perfectly legitimate loophole, Rob. Wesley, would you check over these figures and get an answer back to me right away? Been up here a thousand times, never gave me any flowers. <laughs> this lavender flower now is Reliance Industries. So, as you can see, Rob, each one of these flowers is separate from the others, and it would be impossible to pluck a petal from one and pin it onto the other. Right. Well, therefore, you can easily understand the whole situation. Not in a million years. <laughs> Rob, Rob, it's so simple. Mr. Wesley, the only thing I can understand is I'm paid by a company that's doing great, right? Now, Buddy and Sally are paid by a company that's bleh. Rob, that's it. That's it. You've grasped the basic legal point. <laughs> so, therefore, you can easily see, because of the sagging coloring book picture, it's impossible at this time for me to approve a raise for Sally and Buddy. But, because of Ishimaru's steadily increasing industrial index, it is possible for us to offer all of our executives a 15% raise. And you, Rob, as one of our top executives, are getting a 15% raise as of right now. Congratulations, Rob. Oh, no, no, don't thank me, Rob. Don't thank me. It's all a little, little figures in the books. But I'm going back to the old adding machine now, Rob. So if you don't mind, Rob, if you can just come up, up any time. It's been real fun, Rob. <laughs> Not so good, huh? No, I'll rehearse on it fine. Well, then what's the matter? Well, uh, got a little news for you. Bad news? Well, I don't know most people to say it was good news. Well, what is it? I had a meeting with Doug Wesley today. Who? Doug Wesley's Alan's business manager. Oh. He informed me that I get a 15% raise. 15% more than you're getting now? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, that's marvelous. I'm so proud of you. Mm. So how come you didn't kiss back? You, uh, you weren't kissing me. You were kissing my money. <laughs> I'm not so sure it's my money. What, what do you mean? I went to Doug Wesley today on behalf of Buddy and Sally to get them a raise, which they deserve, but they didn't get. You mean you got their raise? No, no, I got my raise, but they're going to think that it's their raise. I don't understand. Well, honey, you had to be there. That's all. <laughs> Matter of fact, that wouldn't have helped. I was there, and I don't understand it. How do you not understand it? How do you know how every spring when Marvin comes around and he explains to us about our tax situation and what our deductions are and everything, and I always make believe I know what he's talking about? Yeah. With Doug Wesley, I couldn't even make believe. <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to explain what happened to Buddy and Sally. Well, I know one thing, darling. Buddy and Sally would never think you double-crossed them. Well, you, well, you need to go across. I never even had a phone. Well, like because they know you. Of course, they know you. It doesn't make any difference what happened. Well, Rob, if you feel that way, why don't you just tell them you weren't asking for yourself? Well, well you haven't been making a fight with them. Robert Petrie, I did not say that because I want to keep the money. Though I'd like to keep the money. Ha, 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 would like to get money. No, they would like to keep the money. Why can't you do it that way? No, Rob, you've told me many times before that a lot of head writers take the whole writing budget and then pay the other writers themselves. See, that way you could share the raise. Or maybe give them the whole thing? Go rinse your mouth out. Get me Marvin on the phone. Darling, isn't it kind of late to be calling Marvin? This is an emergency. Never see him once a year. All Fool's Day, just before taxes, there's a time let him earn his money for me once. It's ringing. Tell me how broke I am. It's not ringing. Oh, hi, Marvin. Rob Petrie. Yeah, listen, Marvin, you're an accountant. <laughs> no, I didn't wake you up to tell you that. <laughs> listen, Marvin, you're always telling me 
how good tax-wise it is to incorporate and hire my own employees. It is good. All right, look, would it be possible for me to arrange with Alan for me to pay the other writers? Uh-huh. I see. I see. I see. I see. Right. Thank you. Good night, Marvin. You didn't see. Well, honey, I never see you. Again. <laughs> Well, he uh, said something about Delaware. It was a, a, a Panamanian corporation in there. We, uh, we had to move to Switzerland. He would be the, the uh, treasurer of me. I, the whole thing, it wouldn't work. I don't think so. Oh. You know what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to take the raisin and split it between Buddy and Sally. Oh, Rob, that won't work. They'll feel it's charity and you'll feel cheated. Well, then I'm going to have to take the raise and not tell them about it. No, no, you don't. Then you'll hate yourself and you'll take it out by yelling at me. Yeah, and Richie. What I should do is take that money and put it into Martin and Lewis coloring books. <laughs> Martin and Lewis coloring books? I think you're getting punchy. Honey, you don't understand business. The thing is, my raise doesn't matter. If Buddy and Sally don't get their raise, they're going to quit. Well, I know what I have to do. What? I have to make myself a big bowl of hot chili and chopped onions. Oh, honey, that'll keep you up all night. You want to have someone to talk to, don't you? Get the chili. <laughs> oh, no wonder I'm going bald. <laughs> That's all I know. Now, Rob said there were some details that had to be worked out. Yeah, that means we didn't get the rage. Hey, he's smiling. Maybe he worked out things with the management. Well, <clears throat> not uh, yet. I want to try to give you the whole uh, picture. Yeah, I bet those pictures don't have any presidents on them. Well, <laughs> first of all, I met with Doug Westry. Did he come through with the raise? Uh, well, yeah. Well, how much of a raise? Well, uh, 15%. 15%? Hey, that's great. He's a regular Samuel Gumpers. <laughs> Boy, that's, that's great. Why didn't you tell us last night? Well, there's a little more. A little more than 15%? You mean no. we split 15%? No. no. Seven and a half percent? No. Three percent? No, it's 15% raise. It's, it's there, but nobody got it. It's a treasure hunt. <laughs> all right, all right. Wait a minute. Now, just wait a minute. Rob, we've used up our 20 questions. What's going on? Well, it's a basic thing, but I, somehow it gets all involved. If you guys would just give me a chance. Uh -huh. um, it's like this. Did you, did you ever see how many of those little Japanese motorcycles are on the streets these days? What does that got to do with it? Don't you guys understand what I'm trying to tell you? I got the 15% raise. You, you got, got our... our raise? That's right, and a case of shrimp. Shrimp? Yum yum shrimp. Yum yum shrimp? Look, Alan owns a lot of companies. I am paid by Ishimura, which is a great company. You are paid by Tamashan Unlimited of Scotland, which is a rotten company. That explains it. <laughs> it's crazy. You think I made all that up? Mm -hmm. Sounds too ridiculous. Hey, Rob, this is on the level, right? I'm sorry, Sal. I did my best. Boy, you did better than your best. You got yourself a raise. Yeah. Don't well, forget the case of shrimp. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. I'm not accepting my raise. Yeah, but Rob, that doesn't do anything for us. Laura said you'd say that. All right, look, I'll split it with you, huh? Oh, no, we're not taking any charity. Laura said you'd say that, too. Uh, did Laura say we'd quit? No, I said that. You're right. <laughs> look, I know how you guys feel, but what in the world good is quitting gonna do you? Well, nothing for my pocketbook, but a lot for my ego. Buddy, let's go see that accountant while we're still burned up. Come on. Yeah. And while we're there, we'll ask for a raise for you. Look, fellas, don't be mad at me. Oh, we're not mad. That's a secret around here. You ask for a raise for somebody else, you get it. <laughs> well? Goodbye. You're kidding. We'll write to you. What did he say? How's Bermuda this time of year? Very expensive. All right, so I'll go to a movie. <laughs> so you're not serious. Listen, if I'm lying me, I never meet an eligible bachelor. You're serious. Right. Boy, I thought for sure they'd back down. Yeah, I went upstairs and I had what's his name, that Irving accountant. He told us all about uh, the Japanese motorcycles and the Lewis and Martin coloring book. Do you know that Alan Brady's wife pays the band? 
I know it. The whole thing's insane. But they let you quit. I can't believe that. All right, so what are you going to do? Arrange a reconciliation between Martin and Lewis? <laughs> no. I'm going to go up there and give Mr. Numbers a little lesson in arithmetic. I want to show him that three writers minus two writers is no writers. What do you mean? If you go, I go. Hey, do you mean that, Rob? My electric razor's in there. My emergency shirt is there. My galoshes are in the piano bench. Pack me and don't leave without me. <laughs> Mr. Wesley. I was kind of expecting you, Rob. I gather that buddy and Sally meant what they said. They sure did. Well, I tried to explain it to them, Rob. You know, the organization. I don't want any corporate pictures. I don't want to hear about motorcycles or shrimp boats or coloring books or garbage cans. Garbage or... cans? We, we don't make garbage cans, Rob. Oh, no? Well, that's too bad because that's where all this kind of junk belongs. Look, first I want to tell you, I understand that you have to have corporations and companies and dozens of little books with a lot of numbers in them, but numbers didn't make Alan Brady a star. People do. People like Buddy and Sally. And if you're such a smart guy, pull out on the air next week with a motorcycle and an adding machine. We'll add up how many laughs he gets to the gallon. Rob, I don't get it. What are you saying? I'll make it very clear to you with your own little method. <laughs> Mr. Wesley, this pot is the Alan Brady show, right? Right. Uh -huh. And this lovely red flower is Alan Brady. Uh-huh. Now, you take away Sally Rogers and Buddy Sorrell and Robert Petrie, and all Alan has left is an empty pot. <laughs> and if he treats the rest of his staff around here like he treats the writers, he won't even have a pot. And listen to this. Uh, yeah, well, hold on a minute. Uh, Rob... What are you saying? Are you saying that you quit, too? Oh, yes. I am saying that I quit. And you can keep your case of shrimp, too. Is that Alan on there? Yeah. Good. I'd just like to tell him that his motorcycles may not care what price they put on them, but his people do. They're human beings. They're not machines. But never mind. I'll tell you on the way out. Uh, Rob, wait a minute. Uh, Alan. Yeah. Yeah, all three of them. No, contractually, they can't quit. But we can fire them. Oh, no. Oh, no. We quit. We quit. We... He hung up. We quit! You hear quit? You... Ah! Well, well, what'd he say? Well, they couldn't give you a raise. All right. I told you. All right? What did you say? Did you quit? Well, they wouldn't let me. Or you. But he did fire you. Fired us? Yes, your contract says he can fire you, but you can't quit. You mean to say that we don't even get the satisfaction of quitting? Yeah, ain't that a shame? What are you so happy about? Oh, I'm just happy about your new jobs. We got new jobs already? With whom? Barracuda Limited. <laughs> Barracuda? What is that? Uh, Alan Brady's mother-in-law. <laughs> a subsidiary of uh, Brady Lady. We're playing in the band? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just another one of Alan's companies. Hey, Rob, are you serious? Sure. You see, Wesley couldn't find one extra dollar to pay you until he finally realized that we meant business. Now, what he did was simply fire you from a company that couldn't afford to pay you and hire you to one that could. You mean they had the money all along? Yeah, they just didn't know what pocket it was in. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who do we write for? Alan Brady or his mother-in-law? <laughs> Who cares? We got a raise. We're back in business. We're working. Yeah, we got our self-respect. Yeah. All right. Now, friends, everybody in working position. Okay. Yeah. Back to the top. Hello, Mr. Be gardening up here on the 28th floor. Hi, Rob. Hi, Sal. Hey, what kind of shaving lotion are you using? Not me, it's the office. What did you do, shave the office this morning? No. <laughs> Keeps head bay. <laughs> the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Hey, buddy, did a package come for me last Friday? Yeah, from Reliance Industries. Where did you put it? In a filing cabinet under R. That's for oysters. You should have put it under S. That is frozen shrimp. <laughs> frozen shrimp in the filing cabinet all weekend? Oh, wow. Oh, 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 o